everyone. I am here on Focus Forward, and first thing I want to do is to talk a little bit about this negotiation book by George Ross. This is phenomenal. I know I've mentioned it on the show before. Um, I actually sent a copy of this book to my son. He loves it. So I'm almost finished with this book. It has already made me thousands of dollars in negotiation. I recommend that everyone get a copy of this book and start negotiating yourself into a frenzy. Okay, here we are today with Anita Sue Coleman. She is owner of the Anita Sue Coleman Gallery. She is a PhD with a degree in sociology, which of course prepares everyone to be a gallery owner. And um, I want to welcome my very good friend and um, longtime client, Anita Sukoman. Anita, I am so happy to see you today. Well, I'm so happy to have you here. I am really honored to be here. So tell us a little bit about the gallery. Well, um, the gallery. Tell me a little bit about the gallery. Well, it's the greatest place. I mean, I walk into the gallery. I was thinking about it last week when I was there. I get really happy when I go in there. Um, it's amazing to me that I've actually established this gallery and I can be in a really bad mood as soon as I walk in I look all, at all the fabulous art I have I just get really happy I've never seen you in a bad mood and I've known you for a long long time well, that's because so. I keep those private <laughs> <laughs> you keep it private so tell us what's so special about the gallery well um, to me it's special because and, I, and also because I can't believe that we did this it really reflects me and I must confess I have a partner now and it can in, it also reflects him. His name is Patrick Kamal Pryor, and he is also one of the artists that we show in the gallery. Um, so it's very, where people walk in, and people have told me this, people that I don't know. So I'm not, you know, I think it's this way, but people have told me. You walk in, it feels really friendly, it's very warm, um, and it's very exciting, and we have great art. And, um, you know, everything that you'll see in there you might not like, but you'll probably find something you like. Um, and we were able to, we set out to um, create a particular kind of space and a feel and a look, and we actually did that. And that's just, I, I just can't believe that we were that successful, but we are. It's great. It yeah. was exactly what you wanted, and every time anyone goes in, I know I've had groups in there myself, everybody is so excited by just the warmth and the, it feels fun, it feels open, it feels inclusive. You know, there's none of that smoke and mirrors and the, uh, sometimes even like a hostile environment that some galleries have. Right. Everybody feels warm and comfortable and invited, which right. is fabulous. Yeah, and that's exactly what we wanted it to be. We didn't, we didn't want people to feel uncomfortable when, we were th when they were there. Um, looking at art and collecting art should be a comfortable and fun experience. Not that we aren't serious about what we do, because mm -hmm. we're very serious about what we do, but we also want to have fun, and we do. We do. That's good. So tell us about some of your events. You have some really cool events. Well, most of the events that I have are around a show that we have just opened, and so it's a way for people to come in and see the, the art, and the artists are, are most of the art, well, all of the artists that are in a particular show are asked to be present at the reception, and most of the time that happens. Sometimes things come up, you know, life happens, Daryl mm -hmm. us all, and they can't make it. So it's a way for people to come in not only to see the art, but also to meet the artists and talk to them, and um, in kind of a fun way, because we, we try to do things, something different every time we have a reception. So you never know what you're going to, there are some things that are always the same, like the art's there, the artists are there. We always have fabulous food and, and things to drink. Um, my attitude is that you are coming to my house, you're my guests, and how would I treat you if you were at my house? And that's what we do. So we put out nice things when we serve and... You know, I get a lot. I have a lot of fun doing that, and that's what I'm. In, that's one of the things I'm in charge of. Um, Patrick is in charge of the walls, mm -hmm. and he has a great eye for putting work together from a variety of artists 
um, so that they all looked, it all looks the same. I mean, it doesn't look the same, but it looks it's like cohesive. it comes together. It's cohesive. Right? And not everybody can do that, because no. we primarily have group shows. We've had one show where we've only had two artists that sh showed, but even their work weren't, wasn't exactly the same. There was a thing, there was, they were both abstract artists, but their work style was different. Um, so you're going to come in, you'll see that. And then we might have something different, something special. Um, the last reception we had, we had a photo booth. Um, and I work with a particular photographer, and her name is Bernadette Pollard. And she's great, and she loves coming and working with us. And, you know, she has props, just like anybody else. But her props are always a little different. So the theme of the show that we now have is nature and all nature-inspired art and how we interact with nature. So all her props had a nature theme. So she had masks that, you know, you could put up on your eyes. Well, they all had little things on them that looked like you were a tree. And she had uh, <laughs> mo moose <laughs> antlers that you could put on your head and, I, and an owl that you could hold, you know, a stuffed owl or a big owl. And so there's a photo booth, but it's got a, it's tied to the theme of the mm -hmm, show. Mm -hmm. um, what else have we done? We've had a local bands play, and because that's another way for we can support other mm -hmm. artists, types of artists, performing artists. We had one uh, show where we had someone walking around with a bowl of rolled up paper, and she would go, "Let's go up to you," and she'd say, "Well, these are your instructions for the evening," and then you would pick one out and you would open it up, and it was about this long. And written on it would tell you what something you needed to do. Now you could just put it back if you didn't want to do it, but I don't think anybody did that. So there were things like go find X artist and introduce yourself. Um, go find someone in the art in the gallery that you don't know and introduce yourself. Uh, there one said there's an apple somewhere in the art in the gallery. Go pick it up and give it to somebody else. So we had people. I got casting, that apple that night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> casting, casting apples around all yeah. night. It was really funny. So the idea was to get people feeling comfortable doing something fun and to meet the artists and other people in the gallery because we we're very interested in people meeting and connecting and, and building relationships, um, not only with the artists whose work they like, but also other collectors and other people who like art. So. so that sounds great. So I have a question for you. I remember when we used to be at the Women's Club, Minneapolis Women's Club, and um, we worked on the gallery committee right. together prior to you. And which is the way we met. Which is actually the way we met, yeah. Um, prior to you having the gallery, you were the artist representative, and you um, you know, would, would help to put the collectors and artists together, local, local people. Um, how is having the gallery different than what we did at the gallery committee? Well, the gallery committee specifically at the Women's Club of Minneapolis chooses art to show at the club. And it is, uh, it, it actually works very well with my philosophy of wanting to support a local artist because we show local artists there. So that's the way the club reaches out to local artists and shows off their work. And they've been doing that for, oh, probably. 50 years. I mean, I, it's a very oh, it's long history. It's been forever. For a very long yeah. history. But, but so we were on the committee and we, we, we did select artists. It's a jury process. So not everybody who applies for a show gets in a show. In that sense, it's similar to a gallery. A gallery, I get inquiries from artists almost several times a week. Really? And wanting to, for me to consider showing their work in the gallery. And, um, you know, so we don't choose everyone. You are selected, and we have particular criteria that we have that you have to meet for us to consider whether or not to show your work. Um, and that's true of the club, too. And it's true of any kind of venue that's showing artwork. Um, some of them are open, and they'll accept anyone, but most of the time there's some kind of jury process. And it could be one person. It could be a committee. Um, well, I think you're... The, the work that you show at the gallery is much more um, much more within one venue as opposed to the um, the women's club had right. you know, exactly. everything. Which is the next thing I was yeah. going to say. The difference is the women's club doesn't have a specific kind of art in mind other than it has to be able to hang on the wall because that's where we show it. It's, and it could be sculpture that hangs on the wall or it could be t textiles mm -hmm. or glass we've shown. Mm -hmm. um, 
so there's a variety of styles, a variety of, of, of medium, which I also have some variety of medium, but um, my, the work that, I sh that we show in the gallery is mostly is abstract work. It's very contemporary, um, and that's because that's our aesthetic. And it's not because, so for example, if you really, if you sh uh, make realistic, let's say, landscapes um, that are, look like fo maybe photographs, um, but they're paintings and they're, and very good work. You could be doing very good work. We won't probably show that because that's not the style that we show. And so it's, you know, if you say, hey, I'd really love to be in your gallery and I'll look at the work and, you know, I'll say, wow, this is great, but it, you look, you know, we're not going to show it. So we do have a particular aesthetic that we're looking for. The other thing is we have to be sh careful that the work that we show, again, and it could be a variety of mediums because I do uh, show paintings. We have clay, we have glass, mm -hmm. um, and we've shown fiber art. Um, it all has to be somewhat different from each other because, like, for example, right now I'm working with, I always have to count, um, four abstract painters, but their styles are all different. Mm -hmm because I want the work to look good together, but I don't want it to look exactly the same, because then you're competing with, I, I'm putting those artists together, competing against each right, other. Right, right. Which to some extent they're doing anyway, but not to the same thing as if person A and person B's art look exactly the same. So anyway, so we have to keep that in mind. Is, does it work with the other art that we're showing? Because I do um, work on a, routine basis, continual basis, with right now nine artists. And I have work in the art, in the gallery all the time by those nine artists. Now I won't necessarily have all their work up at one time. Um, so I have to think about them, because they are my primary responsibility, I think. I've committed to them that I'm going to show their work and um, you know, so, offer it. So how do you go about marketing a gallery? So tell me about well, the what way we do. market, and this is also the way we find new people, too. Um, and I just wanted to say sometimes we'll invite guest artists in, and they'll just come in for a particular show. And then, um, but again, it's the same criteria. It has to work with the theme. It has mm -hmm. to work with the other things. We market um, in a variety of ways. Um, we uh, obviously have a website. I mean, you can't have a business without a website these days. You just can't. And for us, it's our window. Um, I think it's your window, you know, just like you'd go down the street and look mm -hmm. in the store window, it's your store window. So we have a website, that's like the bare minimum. I also do some social media. Um, I have a gallery page on Facebook. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. I do do some Twitter, but not that much. Um, up until recently, I couldn't put uh, pictures on Twitter, and that's a problem for a gallery because we're all about visuals. Mm -hmm. And that was also a problem up until recently with LinkedIn, too, because I couldn't put photos up either. So Facebook was the one I started with primarily because I could upload all kinds of pictures, which is important. Um, I also do free, take advantage of free marketing, like calendar sections in the paper online. I do a lot of, a lot of the media that I'm in, involved in is online media because that's my market. My market look, work, works with online things. Uh, I do some print, print things, but mostly it's online. Um, I, don't do, um, I don't advertise usually uh, where I don't buy advertisement mm -hmm. because my experience is that it doesn't pay for the expense. A lot of it is word of mouth. My customers are my best marketing tools because uh, they love what they buy. We treat them extremely well, I think. Um, I want to provide lots of good service to them, and they will go out and tell their friends. They bring their friends into the gallery. So those relationships are very important for any business, but particularly for my business, I think, because that's part of my core business plan, is I want to connect people to the art, to the artists, to us, and we know a lot about our customers um, who eventually buy from us. And um, I do a lot of networking, so I go to various events in town. Um, I go to other galleries, and where that's where you meet people who like art. I also find other artists that way. So I would say that's primarily the way we do marketing. 
Well, that's great. And how much, uh, how much mar uh, promotion, like, would you say, like, like strict media promotion, not social media, but just traditional media? How much the like, press releases do you send out? Do you? I know you have relationships with Mary Abbey and right. other um, well-known art critics and things like that. Mm -hmm. How much has that impacted your business? Um, well, I think a lot, actually, because um, when someone new comes into the gallery, if I don't recognize them, I say, well, how did you find out about us? And they often will say, well, we saw something in the on some calendar section or some article that you appeared in. Um, and sometimes I don't remember exactly where, but I know where we've sent things. So it does bring people in. Um, it also gives us some um, exposure uh, to people who may not even ever come into the gallery. I'm, I've gone to things, play, well, networking things, and people will go, oh, I know who you are. And I'll say, well, how do you, how do you know me? And they go, well, I saw an article in the paper, or I saw an article in this uh, online publication. And I went, my God. I mean, it always amazes me. It really does if people pay attention to that. So, um, and I have, I routinely send out emails, and people in the media are on my mailing list. And um, I do have a, 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 a mailing list um, email program that mm -hmm. I can actually tell who opens up my emails, which is really good. Mm -hmm. So I can see who's opening them up. And some of the media people routinely open them, my emails up. Um, so anyway, I, I do send out emails, too. I do have a mailing list. And when we have an event, I do have a press release that's written, written and uh, sent out to various publications that I have built. And, some, and a lot of these people I've met in person. Mm -hmm. You know, they might appear in a panel. So it's relationships again. Exactly. It's relationships. Exactly. You know. Okay, so now what should somebody who is going into a gallery, um, maybe, they're, maybe they're in the market for a piece of art, mm -hmm. what, sh what kind of things should they think about when they're going to go into a gallery or prior to purchasing a piece of art? Well, um, what's important is they should be, uh, I think, feel that this is going to be fun. And, because um, that's important. And they, and this is true for myself. I'm thinking, you know, what do I do? And that was important when I started the gallery. It was like, what do I like about galleries? So I think you walk in the gallery and you look around and you, gallery, Artwork talks to people, and if there is a piece that catches your eye, it's saying something to you. And so that's a clue for yourself. If you, I mean, I find this, I do this myself. I may go into a gallery, and I'll look at a piece, and I'll go, wow, that's ugly. But there's something about it that catches my <laughs> eye. So then I'll walk away. And I see people doing this all the time in, the, in my gallery, so I don't think I'm deaf different. So they'll walk away from it, and then they'll look at something else, and then they'll go back to it again. And when they do that, and you find yourself doing that, then it means like, wow, there is something here that's saying something mm -hmm. to me. And it's not, and it's okay if you can't really articulate that, because you might not be able to. So that's one thing. Um, sometimes people come in with looking for a particular for piece for someplace in their their house, and but again. The artwork has to say something to you, and that's that's important. And I think that's the big difference between printed pieces and originals. I think originals speak a lot more loudly. They're much more vibrant. The energy that you get from them it's it's like a it's like a powerful draw right. that you exactly. have with these pieces, as opposed to right. prints. They could be lovely. They could look nice, but they they don't have that that energetic feel to them. Well, I think I might disagree with you because it depends on the print, but I don't, I'm not going to get into that discussion with you right now. But the point is that what you're saying is, yes, it has to have something that is important to you. And it could be that you are a person that loves lots of energy in a, in a, in a piece. Some people like very quiet pieces, and that's mm -hmm. fine too. But I think what we like to say is that the, you're developing a love relationship with the piece of art that you're going to buy. 
and it has to romance you. And, um, and it's not so crazy to think about it that way because you are buying a piece of art that you will probably have for a long time. Mm -hmm. And when you think about developing a relationship with someone who you might end up loving, having a relationship for a long time, you know, it's a romantic dance that you do. And the art So it's like doing a good marriage. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So um, that's important. And you could go into a gallery and love and think, wow, this is great, it's beautiful, but if nothing says anything to you, then walk out and go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you'll eventually find something. Okay, so now for people that might be interested or might be romancing the idea of opening a gallery, what are the different tips that you could give somebody that um, who's opening would be, a gallery would, would be thinking about it? Okay, well, you have to be very passionate about art. I mean, if you're not passionate, it's too hard to sell it. Art is not something that people really need. It's not like, you know, they don't need, well, some people would. I think you are one of those people. You need <laughs> art. But most people don't need art in order to survive. I mean, they just don't. It's, but it's something you want. You, it might, and it makes your life, it certainly enriches your life. So if you don't have that passion and that feeling that this is really something that I want to devote a lot of energy to, then you don't want to be a gallery or a gallery um, owner mm -hmm. because um, and you should not not think you're going in there and going to make thousands and millions of dollars. It's too hard. I mean, think about it. Artists have a lot of uh, have a hard time making a living, mm -hmm. um, and you are part of that whole process. Not that you can't make a living being an artist. Not that you can't make money being a gallery owner. You can because um, they're gallery galleries that do turn profits and they've been in business a long time because they're very good. And they sell great art. What do you think the difference is between galleries that are successful and galleries that aren't? I think part of it is luck. I really? really I think it's luck. I think all successes has a l little bit of luck in it. But there are things that you can do. As to Trump make. says, the harder I work, the luckier I get. That's right. That's right. I think it's true. But there are a lot of things you can do to make yourself successful. And that is, um, particularly when you're starting out, you should figure out how much money you can afford to set aside for startup. Yes. That's very important. And whether you're going to self-finance it yourself or get a loan or whatever, you have to know, I can set aside this amount of money to do this. And I think that in the time, I mean, I re literally work every day on my business. Not every hour of the day, but I do. Well, I'm constantly I'm, thinking about my business. Well, I, I, I contact you sometimes late at night, and you're, you know, we're, we're talking about up. business, and we're still up, and we're still working. Right. But one of the two reasons why businesses fail, number one, they're underfunded. The second reason is because they are, people treat their business as a hobby. Right. So right. They, they are not hobbies. You know, so they don't, it's, no. you know, they're not going to work. That, no. Those are the two no. things. I agree. So, I agree with that. So you have to be able, you have to decide, I am going to devote the energy that I need to get this going and to continue it once, even once you've established it. So you have to commit that to yourself. And if you're not willing to do that, then probably this is not a business that you want to start. Um, so again, the resources, time, money. I also think you should read all about how to start a business, how to start a gallery, get yourself a good business consultant. And build that into your startup time, yes. your startup time, and your startup money. Um, that's important. See, a lot of people don't think that they need a business consultant because they say, "Well, you know, why would I spend that money? I could do it myself." But you end up saving so much oh, more money. And Imagine time. all the mistakes. Because I hear people when they're, you know, on the skids, they've started their business, it hasn't worked. They come to me as a last ditch effort. If they would have come to me in the beginning, they wouldn't be in this situation for the last ditch effort. Right. You know, that's true. it would they would already start at a much right. higher rate. That's true. That's true. And I learned that the hard way because I started my first art business, which wasn't a gallery, and I just said, "Okay, I love this. I got I did have mm -hmm. the money. Mm -hmm. I did have the passion and I had the time and I was willing to put that all in, but you know, I kind of didn't know what I was doing." You know, I learned a lot from well, uh, 
I guess that's not exactly true because I did do research. I did mm -hmm. read a lot about it. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, did I need a brand? Did I need a logo? Did I do this, this, this? But when you got those things, you things saw a huge off. difference I in did. your business. I did. I did. Yeah. And when I started the gallery, I was already working with mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. and I continued to work with the ga for the gallery, and you helped me define what was in my head, what mm -hmm. I wanted to do, and that was great. So, I mean, I signed a lease. This is how great this is. I signed a lease in an October in 2010. Three weeks, I was open. Yeah. I was open. Yep. And I was lucky because I knew what I wanted the gallery to look like. I already had clients, mm -hmm. which I had that luxury. A lot of people start galleries don't have clients because mm -hmm. I was already working with artists as an art rep, but I just didn't have a dedicated space. But you also, you spent a lot of time learning. You spent a lot of time learning. We went to New York. You went to the summit. You learned about how to pitch the media. You met the media people. I, I mean, so you, you invested a lot of time and energy prior to going into the gallery. You already had a database. You already had a lot of things set up. So it was kind of the logical next step. Exactly. And it was the logical next step for me. And look at how well it's worked. I yeah. mean, now you're, yeah. it's two years soon, right? right. And now and you're mm -hmm. expanding in a way, taking on a partner, right. and going to, uh, you know, adjust the brand up. And I think it's going to be great. I think that's fabulous you to know, continue moving forward. It's great. I mean, I just yeah. have, it's wonderful. It really is. I'm very energetic. Um, I, as I said, when I walk in the gallery, I get really happy. And I have so many ideas. That gallery is beautiful. Well, Everybody has to go to that gallery. <laughs> yeah, well, I have it on my website, but that gallery is gorgeous. Thank you. I think it's the, I think it's the prettiest gallery I know of. Okay. I'm always so excited. Everybody's happy when they're there, not only you. Well, I hope so. I hope so. So I want to thank you so much for coming today. Well, thank you. Uh, thank this you. has been wonderful. I really I love this conversation. You know how much I love art. I love the gallery, and uh, I think it's So what's the new name of the gallery? The new name of the gallery is Coleman and Pryor. Fabulous. So it's both Patrick's and my last name. Fabulous. So. And you're going to come on again after you open up the new gallery, oh, yeah. maybe oh, with Patrick, you. and we can talk again. Yeah. So thank you so much thank for coming. You. It's been wonderful. Hey there, I'm Robert Dempsey with your tips from the net. And today I want to take on a something, not exactly a misconception, but a, a huge battle that's out there with social media today, and that is automation. And what I mean by automation is this, is that there are some tools that are available to automatically direct message people on Twitter. There's scheduling of content. There are other tools that will help you automatically build your social media audiences by following and unfollowing people automatically. Now, some people will say all automation is bad. You should have someone literally sitting there on Twitter all day building, the, building your communities. And I am going to take the side that it is OK to automate. Because frankly, you know, as entrepreneurs, we got to look for ways, that, the best ways to, to spend our time. And if you're out there building products, providing services, it's difficult to get in the time that you really need to spend in order to do this. So I think that some automation is OK. Now, what's not OK is, for instance, let's take, uh, let's, uh, take Twitter real quick. Do not, and I, this happens to me all the time, where people will send me direct messages that say, hey, it's great to connect. By the way, I have this unbelievable business opportunity for you. And you see a lot of people sending you those direct messages. That is spam. Don't do that. It's bad. People don't like it. In fact, they'll hate you, and they will tell all their friends about it. So a couple tools to help with this, tools that I recommend. There's one called Tweet Adder. I know Twitter tried to ban it, and they kind of made their way around that. Uh, so check that out. That's tweetadder.com. And another one is called Tweet Spinner. Both of these are Twitter-specific tools. Facebook, you're going to just have to get in there and do it yourself. So that's it for today. Automation is okay. Don't listen to the haters. And I'm Robert Dempsey, and I'll see you on the next tip.